Chocolates and bread. Some Oklahoma grocery stores now have vending machines that sell ammunition. News Channel 8 CJ Macklin found one in Wetumpka that's about 80 miles south of Tulsa. He spoke with the CEO of the ammunition company about what exactly inspired them to do this. In the city of Wetumpka, there is not an ordinance regulating vending machines or ammunition sales. I spoke with the city's attorney over the phone. And he said this deal was done between a private contractor and a private business owner. Honestly, my very first opinion when I saw the vending machine, I had to walk up to it and go see if it was real. Because I thought it was really funny. I was like, whoa, vending machines were like snacks and pops and now you can get ammo out of it. The ev evolution of vending machines has reached another level. A level that could be the future on how ammunition is sold all over the U.S. American Rounds has been around for less than a year and already has ammo dispensers in several states, including four right here in Oklahoma. We traveled about an hour and a half south to find one of those locations in Wetumpka inside the Super Sea Mart. The ammo vending machines or dispensers at American Rounds also has a facial recognition scan to check your identification to make sure there's no fraud when purchasing the ammunition. The CEO says the machine is quick and easy to use, but will residents in Wetumpka use it? American Rounds provides ammunition for hunting, personal protection, and at home protection, from shotgun bullets to rifle bullets to handgun bullets. As you can see here, we have, you know, a very secure automated retail machine. We're able to age verify, we scan a driver's license. It then takes 360 facial recognition for the purchase and matches it to the ID. So the machines really provide an opportunity for safe, affordable, and available ammunition sales. Well, that's a concern to some. It's also the fact that this machine is in a store that's located less than 200 yards from a middle school. There are literally every day after school children hanging out in that parking lot going to buy snacks it, it's just extra disturbing to me i want to give all the praises and the honor to yahweh bahashem yahweh shah bahashem recha hakwadash and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of great millstone honors as well to your brethren your fellow believers of this truth and shalom to the elect so anyway um i saw this this news article on one of the news channels it seems legitimate right our job is Ezekiel 3 and 17 is the warn to be warned the watchman right watchman of things that are to come that's our job to report these type of stories I never normally see these type of stories other brothers get them before I do but I just happened to see this particular story and a couple of scriptures um, one major scripture came to my mind and it almost seems like um, there's going to be like a maybe preparing for some type of purge can you imagine like the movie like the purge and everything shuts down right and while everything shut down uh, you can't go into the store and buy ammunition you can't buy bullets you can't do any of these things but you can grow, go into the grocery store scan your ID and buy the bullets that you want to get I don't know this also brings me close to the MLTB the mark Revelation 13 where they already have it for the guns by the way that you you put it in you know what I'm saying and then your gun activates and imagine just using that and swiping and going and get your bullets so you know they're making it all convenient right now it probably is more convenient you know slavery breeds um convenience br convenience breeds slavery nobody wants to get up and hit the remote anymore i mean turn the television anymore you want to hit the button they got remotes for everything hell now in your car you ain't got to shift the gears you got a push button <clears throat> you know so it's it's all convenience but anyway uh i'm just gonna read a couple scriptures uh isaiah 13 um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to pick a few out of it. You know, Isaiah 13, 11, it says, And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the hardiness of the terrible. So you see all this starting to transpire, right? Babylon is being brought low. So there's going to be a lot of violence you know, okay, okay, in Babylon, uh, as Apostle Ramlob did a video, Babylon has become a danger zone, right? And this just aids it, you know. 
And some of you might say, eh, it's not a big deal. They got vending machines for everything. Well, it's all part of it. You know, like I said, the convenience and not being able to have to pull out your credit card anymore, not need a car key anymore. To, you know, you will be one LinkedIn. So you can see the convenience, what it does, right? Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in, and in the day of fierce anger, right? So destruction, right? It says, and it shall be as a chased row and a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee to his own land, right? Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, right? Everyone that is uh, joined unto them shall fall by the sword. So we see the upcoming World War Three. You're going to more likely have a draft. Um, you know, everything's going to take place over in, in the Middle East, so to speak. Joel, the third chapter. So it's going to get ugly. And these are just portions. The, the reason why I'm reporting this because this is just this, the road to lead to what's coming, right? So we're going to go to Isaiah 19 and 2, right? And then I'll get to the main scripture that came to my mind. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against their brother. And they didn't have to say the word Egyptians in here, but, you know. Back then, they wouldn't have called it America anyway. <laughs> and every one against his neighbor, and city against kingdom, and against uh, city, and kingdom against kingdom. Which we see in, uh, I believe, the book of, was it Matthew 24? When it says, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, right? So you're going to have uh, basically America, Americans fighting against one another, right? And all on different levels. Um, and the spirit of Egypt shall fall in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the council thereof, and they shall seek for their idols and the banner and the charmers, and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards, right? And the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of the cruel, a cruel lord, and fierce king shall rule over them, and their lord of lord of hosts. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, the lord is going to bring hell. And, you know, these people, they're going to look for the authorities. They're going to look. Remember the Apocrypha, we'll go there in a second. When it says, um, no man shall regard their princes. Right? No man shall regard their princes. That's uh, a situation that's that's going to come too. The, the people you voted for, you're going to find out is fraudulent. Now, all these people tell us to vote. As I quote the younger brother said, all the people tell us to vote. Well, if you voted and it didn't work, then that's your fault. That is not our fault. You know? Anyway... Let's go back to, I want to go back to Isaiah 13 before I jump back. Isaiah 13 and 2, it says, Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. That's what we're doing. Exalt the voice unto them. As I was reading Ezekiel 3 and 17, to warn them, shake the hand that may go into the gates of the nobles. Right? So let's go back here real quick. And this is the one I wanted to get. Well, let me get Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in that uh, street, uh, in the street of that great city, which shall spiritually be called Sodom of Egypt. <clears throat> right? This is why we know that when we see Isaiah 19, it's not talking about actual Mizraim. Right? It could have just said, when it's actually talking about Egypt, it could have just said Mizraim. But when you look at the word Egypt, it just means, you know, a bondage. <laughs> It says, where also our Lord was uh, crucified. You know, they bought us this damn Christianity. And our people are in a dead state. <clears throat> but literally, our people are dying by the sword. He said that in, um, what is that? What scripture is that? Where it said, our, our, um, your people shall die by the sword. Oh, in, I believe book of Amos. Where it said that, that, that mothers shall be harlots in the street. And their sons shall die by the sword. Right? Um, let's go to 2nd Ezra 15. 
15 and 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. And that's why I wanted to get this scripture. It seems there's more guns in the hood than there is jobs. I wonder how is that? How, do, how is the fact that there's more guns and putting in people's hands to kill one another, and then they push the rap music to help promote the violence? Well, you need, to, you know, just like when you listen to the music, the vibration of the music, that opens up things, but then it's what comes in that's sealed in you. See that certain music gives a vibration to open the door, right? So you can open the door for good things, and you can open the door for bad things, right? So when it opens the door... It brings these things in, and not just your music, but your entertainment. They're doing it through movies, right? They're doing it through psyopsis, you know. So we see a lot happening, and this is why the world is turning like it is. Because the Lord, the Lord has spoken, and he said that this is what he was going to do. Okay? A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread, and for great tribulation, right? And that's pretty much the point if you read all the second Ezra 15. And I just wanted to report this because um, that we could see, I mean, if somebody is an habitual drug addict and you open up a drug store right next to him, well, he's got easy access to the drugs, right? So whatever somebody... Whenever you want to promote something and you give it to them, it's kind of like the gym. You go to work out in the gym and you come out and it's Dunkin' Donuts right across the street. It's a rotating cycle. And this is the same thing you see here with violence. The more you're supposed to be against it and create all these laws, the more you hear it in the music, the more you see it on television, and it becomes a psychological rotating system, right? So, you know, and that's what our people have uh, come to but then you have these good old boys who sit up and they're you know believe it or not they're violent too they're just waiting for the time okay um oh let me get another scripture real quick let me get another scripture um job 20 that just came to my mind job 20 job 20 where are we at 20 and 22, it says, In the fullness of his sufficiency, sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. You know, other Israelites and other nations of people, right? They they coming on Edom, man. They're going to come, come down on this system, right? When he is about to fill his belly, then Yahweh shall cast a fury of, of wrath upon him. And shall rain it upon him while he's eating. So he's doing all this to, to create his NW0, so to speak. That's all this is for. Order up KO, commit, you know, set it all, set the stage, right? To put people in straight. So then they have to agree to certain legislations and cameras and MOTBs, if you know what I mean, rice grains, uh, Revelation 13, 17s. So they set it all up. But. When he's about to fill his belly, then that's when the Lord going to uh, cast, uh, uh, rain the fury of hell on him. Those missiles are going to come flying, man. So anyway, uh, that's all I have on that. Shalom.